So Matt, John C. Bennett becomes an important figure in Nauvoo in 1842, but when did he first become acquainted with Joseph Smith? So John C. Bennett begins a correspondence with Joseph Smith in 1840. Uh, he writes him several letters. At the time, John C. Bennett is the quartermaster general um, in Illinois, and he writes Joseph letters about how he's heard about Joseph Smith, he's interested in the saints, he wants to come to Nauvoo and ultimately join with the saints. And so Joseph says, yes, please come, come visit us, come join with us. And so John C. Bennett moves to Nauvoo in September of 1840, and he's baptized and becomes a member of the church then. And then he begins kind of this meteoric rise uh, within Nauvoo and, and within the church. He's instrumental in getting the charter passed that incorporates the city of Nauvoo. He also becomes the first mayor of Nauvoo uh, once that charter has been passed. Um, he becomes a major general and the inspector general in the Nauvoo Legion. And he even becomes an assistant president in the first presidency of the church because Sidney Rigdon is ill and can't fulfill those duties. So he really becomes kind of a rising star in Nauvoo. But it seems that there are uh, rumors that quickly surface after John C. Bennett comes to Nauvoo about him as a person, about some of his conduct. What are, when do those rumors come about and what were they? So there are rumors that he is married and that he's left behind a wife and children. Um, and then by 1841, we get additional rumors that he is uh, seducing women in Nauvoo on the justification that Joseph Smith and other church leaders um, in the terms of contemporary documents uh, condone promiscuous intercourse between the sexes. But does Joseph look into these claims that Bennett has a family? Joseph does. Uh, in the summer of 1841, William Law and Hiram Smith are back east, they're in Pittsburgh, and Joseph asks them to go down to Ohio and to see whether Bennett really does have a family down there. So they go and they investigate and they find that indeed uh, Mary Barker um, was John C. Bennett's wife. And as they look into this further, they find that Mary had uh, apparently left John C. Bennett um, a few weeks before Bennett comes to Illinois because Bennett had been abusive. Um, he had been kind of a serial adulterer that had broken up as many as seven families in the area. So uh, he had apparently separated from Mary Barker, but they weren't divorced at the time. What about the rumors about Bennett and Nauvoo? Was there any truth to those? Yes, the Nauvoo High Council begins investigating uh, these claims of sexual misconduct in May of 1842, and they uh, get affidavits, testimonies from several of the women involved. One of the most important uh, in terms of details is Catherine Fuller Warren, who says that, that Bennett approaches her in 1841 and, and seduces her um, and then continues that practice. Um, and apparently other men in Nauvoo follow Bennett's example and use the same justification that church leaders sanction such illicit behavior. Part of this seems to be connected to rumors about plural marriage. Of course, uh, Joseph Smith saw his own practice of plural marriage far differently than Bennett's promiscuity. Uh, for Joseph, uh, the relationships he engaged in were ceilings or marriages that had formal proposals um, and official religious ceremonies with witnesses. What actions uh, does Joseph take against Bennett when he learns about these details? Joseph confronts Bennett about them, but he's willing to give Bennett a second chance. And so uh, when Bennett acts contrite and says that he'll reform, Joseph's willing to believe him that this will happen. And I think this happens on a few different occasions in 1841 and 1842. But I think finally by the spring of 1842, Joseph realizes that Bennett's not going to change. And so Joseph uh, decides that it's time to take action against Bennett. Um, and on May 11th, 1842, the First Presidency, the Quorum of the Twelve Apostles and Nauvoo's Bishops sign a fellowship withdrawal um, that essentially cuts Bennett off from the church at that time. But before they make that public, they give Bennett the opportunity to withdraw voluntarily from the church, and Bennett does so on May 17th, 1842. Uh, he also resigns as mayor of Nauvoo at the same time. And so we do have some action occurring in May of 1842. And I think Joseph also uh, wants to address the Relief Society in Nauvoo, about what's been going on with Bennett. 
How does he do that, and what does he tell the Relief Society? So he first reaches out to the Relief Society by a letter um, that's dated uh, March 31st, 1842, in which he warns the sisters about Bennett and these other men and their seductions, um, and essentially says that they don't have any authority or validity um, in terms of the arguments they're making about Joseph and what he um, sanctions. But over the course of the summer of 1842, we get uh, several Joseph Smith discourses to the Relief Society in which he is asking the sisters um, to encourage repentance, encourage moral reform, and to be merciful and forgiving to those who have sinned. That's really interesting because I think he, Joseph uses that same kind of mercy and forgiveness towards John C. Bennett. Even after uh, kind of cutting John C. Bennett off from the church, Joseph still tries to preserve their relationship, at least for a period of time. He defends John C. Bennett before the Nauvoo Legion. Uh, there's a resolution that's passed by the Nauvoo City Council at Joseph's request, commending John C. Bennett um, for his service as mayor in Nauvoo. But for some reason, by mid-June 1842, something has changed in Joseph's mind, and he, he believes that he needs to now denounce John C. Bennett and kind of distance himself from him. So he writes a letter to church members. He also writes a letter to Illinois Governor Thomas Carlin. And in both of these, he exposes Bennett as an imposter, talks about his adultery, about his conduct in Nauvoo, how he has harmed women there, um, and just wants to make people aware of who Bennett is. Bennett, of course, doesn't take too kindly to this, and he leaves Nauvoo on June 21st um, and begins to publish a series of four letters in the Sangamo Journal a Springfield, Illinois newspaper that denounced Joseph Smith, uh, depict Joseph Smith as immoral, um, as a murderer, um, as someone who is morally deficient. And Bennett as well goes on a speaking tour throughout the eastern United States, also denouncing Joseph Smith, and eventually publishes a book in the fall of 1842, which he calls an expose of the church and of Joseph Smith. So things don't end well. Um, how does this affect the church? What's kind of the long-term fallout from John C. Bennett? Well, there's an, a community effect, especially for the numerous women who were harmed um, in, the, in the course of these seductions. Bennett also forever colors uh, the public perception of plural marriage, of polygamy, as practiced by the Latter-day Saints uh, because of the lurid descriptions he uses in his letters, in his book, in his speaking tour. And Bennett also has connections to a second attempt to extradite Joseph to Missouri because he argues in his letters that Joseph Smith was complicit in an assassination attempt on former Missouri Governor Lilburn Boggs. So there really are some long, long-term effects. It's almost as if you wish you could go back to Joseph in 1840 and say, Joseph, don't answer those letters from John C. Bennett. Just ignore them. It's not going to end well. Absolutely. And indeed, it, it doesn't end well. 